Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff, and I wanted to do a different kind of video today showing off a hobby project that has taken an immense amount of my time this last week, and I cannot wait to talk about my first ever display board. It's a plank of wood with some foam on it, and it ends up looking amazing. So if you want to know how I built the entire thing and how it fits into my full bone splitters army, I'm going to discuss kind of the inspiration stage, how I went about building it, and of course the final product, which just finished drying this morning. Really quickly, though I couldn't have done it without a whole bunch of hobby supplies that I got from Not Just Gaming. They have everything from the gamer's grass tufts that I use, the sand, the glue, all of it, all those brands are available there. So if this inspires you to do your own hobby board, please use the link in the description below for Not Just Gaming. Save yourself up to 15 to 30% on all your purchases, and every single time you use that link, it goes directly to supporting me, my wife, our cats, this whole thing, and I could not be more grateful. So let's start here. Why a display board? Well, I've been to more and more Age of Sigmar events lately that feature hobby scores going on the rise, and part of that also is the display board. Basically, taking a, a scene, a vignette from the mortal realms and creating it in a two by two three-dimensional masterpiece. If you want to see some examples, I'm going to throw them up on the screen here, of some tremendous display boards. They're absolutely wonderful. Vince Ventrella and Tom Lyons do excellent work when it comes to creating captivating scenes that just showcase their models. Other folks are kind of creating almost like a uh, three-dimensional portrait of their vision. So rather than making something that would exist in the Mortal Realms to showcase the army, it's more like they're trying to give you a snapshot into their imagination. Again, there's no wrong answer, it's just all awesome. So for me, coming at the Bone Splitters, I, I knew I wanted to use them as the foundation of my first board because they're really my favorite army that I've played in 3rd edition, having an absolute blast with them. And so I went to go through the Battle Tome and look at various pieces of artwork for inspiration. What do I want my my bone splitters to look like, and I found this. I adore this piece of artwork. As you can see, you have a, a massive open sky, you have Gur, everything around them is bones. There's some huge towering rib cages back here, lots of orc bone splitter boys. Um, there's obviously a Wargog Prophet right here, Channeling's Magic, that's my preferred general as well. So I wanted to kind of take the vibes from this particular painting. A few things stood out to me. One, they are cramped, okay? Like, all the boys are on top of each other. So even though I'm working with a 2x2 two two board, I want to have lots of floor space so I can jam as many of the orcs as I have painted in there to make it the tide, the flood that you see in this image. I wanted a mix of boar riders and uh, foot troops. So obviously you have foot troops here in the front. In the background, you can make out some boar boys. The Wargog Prophet, I wanted him to be centered and elevated so that he would have that commanding position of power. And a few other elements is like bones and stuff like that. Obviously from the Gurish background, we see spinal cords and vertebrae and rib cages and stuff like that. I wanted to capture as much of this painting as I possibly could. And this is how the project began. Now, if you followed me on my YouTube shorts, you would have seen the kind of the progress as we went a few stages. This is a two by two piece of hunk of wood from, I got from Lowe's, such a home improvement store here in the States, and a bit of craft foam that they had on sale. And using the Army Painter Dungeon Master set they sent me many, many months ago, uh, I was actually gonna use that to create a catacombs board for Warcry, but then the new Warcry came out and kind of invalidated that a little bit. So I was like, what can I do with this? And so using the hot wire cutter, the foam, the all the kinds of glue and adhesives that come in there as well as some primer that's safe for foam the army painter thing really did help if you're looking to make a display board highly recommend that set everything you need is in there so looking at our board here what was my outline i really wanted to have this kind of center almost lion king s cleft raised up for on the rocks so my wargog prophet's going to go up here i have a little scale model of some cacti I threw down a bunch of glue, threw some, some large hunks of rock and slate. And then with my styrofoam scrap, I created these little semicircles, these half rings. Now, why did I do that? Well, I wanted to take up some space of the board. I don't own that many orcs that I could fill this entire thing with. I know that's probably uh, a sign that I need to go buy some more orcs. But um, I wanted to have something that is also representative of my sub-faction, not just that picture of art in general and so these are going to act as blood pools if you are not familiar the drakfoot uh sub faction of bone splitters they actually come from the realm of fire now they go to other places now so it's not like there's it, it's impossible that they're in Gur. but one of the things that makes them unique is their red war paint is specifically red because they use 
lakes of blood from the realm of fire that corn guys have put down to daub themselves in. And there used to be this really great backstory about how it would resist magic and it gave them all kinds of super magical powers at the same time. It was just weird kind of conundrum. The, the old Bone Splitters lore was so much more fun, so much more vibrant. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna put these little hunks of foam down to kind of create the vague outline of some some lakes. And here's a side view. I went ahead and with some um, fill in gray crap and then just kind of like made a little basin for the water just so that the resin that I put in there, the quick fill for water effects that you get from like a hobby store uh, can actually pool somewhere rather than just sinking into the wood. And that's how she looked at the end of day one. So you can see there's our sideways picture. And again, it's, it's not meant to be like super detailed. I didn't want this whole rock thing to be like distracting. I didn't put like a face of Gork or anything into it. The whole idea was just, I just want something cool that raises my Wurgog profit up. Now, after a ton of work, I reached this point. Now, I understand that I forgot to take pictures a few key moments here between picture one and picture two. So let me walk you through what we have here. Uh, just kind of go back and forth between, we'll go these two shots here, right? That's, that's a good comparison. So the first thing I did was put this um, gray primer down just to have some good base for the blood pools. And I knew that these were gonna be rocky outposts, so that's fine. As far as the rest of the board, I then went over the entire thing with a thinned out thing of white glue and then poured a mixture of cat sand, like a kitty litter, and some finer sand. So there's a mix in here. It doesn't show up too well on camera, but there is a, a great mix of different materials. So some bits are bigger, some are smaller to scale. It just looks vibrant. Put that on there, let it dry overnight, and then came back with a second layer of that thin down paint put it on again and let that sit. Try basically trying to seal as much of this texture as I can into the actual board. I then primed the entire thing, minus the lakes, uh, with the Army Painter, their tan spray. So they make these spray rattle cans that are for their dungeon building thing, which basically they're expensive spray paints, but they're safe for foam. And so you can just hose right on there and it won't do a thing. So I grabbed their like dust or desert themed one, that kind of tan bone color, hosed the entire thing down safely, had absolutely no problems with my foam distorting at all. And then with that done, I took uh, a half a bottle of Cassandora yellow, thinned it out a whole bunch into a giant ramekin and then just washed the entire board minus the lakes. Let it sit overnight. Then I dry brushed the entire board overnight. I wanted to add a little bit of, of uh, terrain variety so you can see the little splotches of, of darker brown kind of going into more to the bone hue. And that's just, I, I dabbled around with different washes and stuff like that. I, again, pictures don't really do it justice, but uh, the, the variety is there. Then I went back and put down corn red in the lakes, built it up to Mephiston red, and then uh, was it put on the instant cure water resin? I'll find a picture of it here soon, but basically water effects that model train guys use. Filled up the lake. I think I did two to three layers. I believe the back one required more because it's a little bit deeper. And then on top of that, I kind of dabbled along the edges with blood for the blood god. And that actually gave it a nice little, little bloody water hue, if you will. So let's get this back to being full screen. So with the lakes just about done at that point, right? Everything's dry brushed, the lakes are done. I then went back to the center area and started attaching a whole bunch of shrubs. Now, Gamer Grass is a wonderful store. I believe it's out of Peru or Portugal. I'm so sorry, I can't recall. But um, they make these incredible little tufts. I've talked about them here on the channel before. Just wonderful scale model bits, uh, lots of flowers, and, and these ones here in the center, that's like a 3D cutout thing of a very strong cardboard material, but it actually looks like a flower when it's on there. I'll show you a few different ones. And uh, I really just wanted to decorate that center space, not because I feel like the rest of it needs it. I mean, it's gonna be filled with boys, you know, orcs running forward, but I wanted a little something to make this area look like there's just a gap in the rocks where life can grow unhindered and that's that's the idea I was going for Here's my back blood lake with my little cacti growing in you See we got some uh, flowers and shrubs growing around some trees thrown in there all kinds of cool stuff Here's a shot of where the Wurgog prophet stands. I like that one quite a bit So he his base fits perfectly in this little nook that was the intention and all of these things are glued down like all it's all massively glued down and here's the the left side of the board if you're looking at it head on i needed to leave space at least on one of these the side flanks because i do have that uh, rogue idol of gork or mork boar that i wanted to show off for everybody now i was concerned that the uh, 2000 point list that i made which is mostly boar riders 
would not take up as much of the board as I needed it to. So I painted up some terrain as well. These, this is the dragon bone bits thing that came with the, what is it? Thondia set originally. I think it's separate now, um, but I love, 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 love these sculpts. They're wonderful. They're kind of a pain to put together. I don't know if anyone else had trouble with them, but they're great looking models. And so I painted up the bases to match most of the, the basing of the actual board. There's a little bit of a discrepancy when areas get darker, but I mean, it looks fine. And also this nice tall rib cage is gonna help me to kind of get some of the details from this picture. Like I wanted some aspect of the rib cage going up and I think having the th terrain set on one side of the board is gonna look awesome for that exact image. So without further ado and 14 minutes into the video, here is the final product. This is all of my painted orcs right now, much more than a single list on the board. And I am gonna take you on a little family tour, if you will. Of course, at the top center, we have our Wurgog Prophet. We have our boar on the right side. That's our rogue idol of Gork. All the boar boys you can handle on the right. All of my boys on foot, which are actually more boys. Uh, it's the only infantry that I have at the moment are in the dead center. Big boss in the front here. We have our terrain wrapping around the sides. So here's the skull and, and spine. The rib cage is going up on the side there. To the left, we have our big stabas and our last thing of, these are the boar boy maniacs led by a shaman back there. So let's go on our full tour. Boss with all the boys in the front. I love this picture so much because this is one of my favorite models Games Workshop's ever made. Here's a good shot of our boys and how they're charging forward on the right side if you're looking at it from the front. Here we have our war dock up in the little kitty corner. Our boy, uh, the rogue idol, which was made for me by an awesome viewer here on the channel. Absolutely love this sculpt. And if you would like your own, there is a description link down below for you. Please go support uh, Viridian Forge. He's a wonderful person. Here is my Wurgog Prophet, which was especially painted for me by Jack from Rerolling Ones. And I do very much value this little guy. He fits in perfectly into that little nook. And uh, I think he looks pretty stellar doing it. Over on the left side, we have our Boar Boy Maniacs, led by the Maniac Weird Knob Shaman on his little boar. And this is just a pick to get some of the, the variety of the terrain here. So it's a good shot of the flowers and the blood and the dudes and the bones and all that. So stopping to take a step back and look at this guy, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the next Age of Sigmar event that I can go to where I can bring this sucker and actually show off my entire army. Now, of course, in a uh, competitive list, the more boys here wouldn't exist. I think that's the only thing that I own here that's painted, well, maybe the War Dock, uh, of stuff that I just don't take. Now, keep in mind, this list was from before uh, the current battle whatever update came out that made having infantry troops way good. So more boys, I think, have a lot more stock now than they did at the time when I wrote that list. But I love the fact that I can fit them all on here. Now, of course, I do still have like 30 or 40 arrow boys and even more more boys. And I do want to expand and get some basic uh, savage orcs, but that's all for the future plan. This, this was about a hobby achievement and I am satisfied. Now, one other thing I do want to do eventually, this is, this is just not very high on my priority list, is I want to get a two foot square that goes up the back and I just put a little bit of a background on there like it wouldn't be much more besides just some colors and stuff but basically looking to to have a backdrop to the scene itself I think could be really fun that's something I've seen Tom Lyons and Vince Ventrella do I like it it's just one of those things if you're looking head-on at the piece like judging it it just makes it feel special but I gotta say this thing's sitting right next to me because I literally just took these pictures and I'm gonna feel so excited when this sucker is like set up and judges are walking around taking pictures. I don't know, I'm just, I'm truly very excited about this build and I know it's not special. There's tons of spots that need improvement. There's some places where there's a little bit of the wood showing, the paint covers it up for the most part. It's not here to win awards, it's here to make me happy. And in that regard, it has fully succeeded. So friends, that is my display board. The first one I ever made, probably one of the last ones. I mean, certainly it's the only AOS one I'm gonna make. Uh, I might do another one for a uh, conquest or something like that at some point, but I'm very excited about how it all turned out. It was a lot of work, a lot of do a thing, wait a day. Do a thing, wait a day. So it took forever, but uh, I could not be more happy with how it turned out. And I would love to hear your feedback about it. Uh, what kind of display boards you would like to make if there's a piece of artwork that excites you. Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for taking the time just to watch something about me.